Today, we're making banh mi thịt nướng, or grilled pork Vietnamese sandwich. And we're making everything but the bread from scratch. Now, banh mi thịt nướng was my favorite banh mi growing up, and every bite takes me right back to my childhood when my dad would take me to Saigon Deli after youth group to buy me some snacks. Now, one of the things I always ordered was banh mi thịt nướng. And for this video today, we'll break down how to make the pork skewers, the pickled veggies, and the Vietnamese butter or bơ that'll all go in the banh mi. So do me a favor and make sure you like, comment, share, and save this video. All right, y'all, remember to wash your hands. The first step is prepping our pork. I have about four pounds of pork shoulder that I'm going to slice up thinly. The pro tip for making it easier to slice is throwing it in the freezer for a few hours before you're ready to cut. Partially freezing it helps firm up the protein and makes it way easier to slice. And while we're cutting this, we just wanna cut the shoulder against the grain to make sure that our pork is as tender as possible. And here's the real pro tip though. Just ask your butcher to slice it up for you or buy the pork pre-cut you can usually find it at any Asian grocery store and it'll be alongside the other hot pot or shabu shabu meats. It might be a little bit more expensive, but you'll save a ton of time. But if you're broke like me and you choose to cut your own pork shoulder, this was about $3.49 a pound. And if you like this recipe and you wanna learn how to make more of your favorite Vietnamese and Asian dishes, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications to stay up to date on all my latest posts. Once we have all the pork cut, we'll move it into a bowl and get it marinated. We'll start by adding minced lemongrass. And I like processing my lemongrass in a food processor and storing it flat in a Ziploc bag. I usually do this in bulk as it freezes really well. And that way, I always have minced lemongrass handy. And I don't know about y'all, but mincing lemongrass and garlic is probably my least favorite thing to do in the kitchen. So I try to avoid it as much as possible, but sometimes you just gotta suck it up. So we'll mince up the shallot and we'll get that into the bowl. Then we'll add some minced garlic. And I have about four tablespoons of oyster sauce. and a couple tablespoons of soy sauce, a splash of fish sauce. Then for some sweetness to balance out all the umami notes, we're gonna add in honey. I also usually like to add in brown sugar as it adds a bit more depth to the flavor profile, but I ran out, so we're just using honey today, and that's A-OK -okay too. Then we'll add in some oil, sesame seeds, salt and pepper. We're gonna get our hands dirty and give that a good mix. And there's something so visceral about touching food for me, but feel free to use tongs or wear a glove if your hands are shy. If you're like me though, just make sure you wash your hands thoroughly and often. Once our pork shoulder is all mixed up, we're gonna let this vibe out in the fridge. Overnight is best if you have time, but an hour is okay too. We'll let our pork vibe out and we'll make our pickled veggies. We'll start by peeling our daikon and carrots, and look at how massive this carrot is though. And then when they're both peeled, we'll cut these into matchstick pieces. You can also use a box grater instead to make it easier, but I like the crunch of these bigger cuts. When our carrots and daikon are all cut up, we'll toss them in some kosher salt to draw out the moisture, and we'll let them sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. Then our pickling liquid is just equal parts sugar, vinegar, and water. We're gonna heat this up slightly, just enough for the sugar to fully dissolve. We'll let this cool down before adding to our veg. Once our carrots and daikon are pliable like this, they're good to go. We'll rinse them off in some cold water, get them into a container, 
add our pickling liquid and store in the fridge. And in a few hours, you have your very own homemade dochu. Now next up is our ba or Vietnamese butter because no banh mi is complete without it. Now the name of this spread is a little bit controversial because the direct translation for it is butter. But since there's no dairy in it, it's not quite butter. And some folks call it mayo and the texture and flavor is pretty similar but since there's no vinegar, it's not quite that either. Then there's the camp that calls this an aioli but aiolis require garlic so we're just short of that as well. Now I've also heard some folks call this an egg sauce and that might be the most apt because the spread really is just egg yolks, oil, and salt. To a container or mixing bowl, we'll add in five egg yolks. We'll get that whisked up until it's smooth and then I'll slowly drizzle in about a cup of oil and continue to whisk. I'm just using vegetable oil today and you can use any type of neutral oil for this. We'll continue to whisk until it thickens to your desired consistency, and then we'll just season this with a pinch of salt. And the ba is just that simple. Then all that's left is finishing the prep on the rest of our fillings. First, I have some cucumbers, and today I'm using English cucumbers, but my preference is actually Persians, as it has very little seeds and the skin is super thin, giving it the best taste and crunch for cucumbers. The ones at the market today didn't look great, so I opted for English cucumbers instead. We'll just slice these up. Then I have some cilantro that I'll dunk in cold tap water several times to clean and remove any sediment, and I'm just cutting off the woodsy end part of the stem. Now finally, I have some jalapenos, which are completely optional, and we'll just thinly slice that as well. Now if you like the flavor of jalapenos, but you don't want the spice, you can remove the seeds to remove some of that heat. Now once we have all of our prep work done, let's get our pork skewered up and on the grill. And before we do that, We'll want to soak our skewers in some water, as this will help it from burning too quickly on the grill. We're going to take pieces of our pork and just skewer it, and I'm not really sure what to call the technique, but you'll just stab the pork in multiple places with the skewer to make sure that it's firmly secured. I'll show you a couple different angles of me getting it done, but basically it should look like this when it's all stacked up with no loose bits dangling. After an eternity later, we have all of our skewers put together. Step three is grilling them and enjoying. I have my grill on its medium setting and we're just gonna toss a few of these on without crowding the grill. I don't want these to cook too quickly as the sugar content is high so we don't want the sugars to caramelize and burn before the pork is cooked through. 
On my grill, these take about seven to eight minutes on each side. And right before they're done, I'll crank up the heat to high to make sure that we get some really nice color on the skewers. Now every grill is different, so you'll wanna make sure that you cook these up to a safe internal temp. For pork, that's 145, but for these skewers in particular, I usually cook these up to about 175 internal temp. Once we have all that done, it's time to assemble our bun money. Now I buy my baguettes from Tansun in the International District where they bake their bun mais fresh every single day. And I do think they have the best bun mais in Seattle right now. Each long baguette makes two bun mais and costs a little over a dollar and is so good. Now to the bun mais, we'll slather on our homemade ba. Remove the pork from a couple of skewers and get that sandwiched in there. And then we're topping that with our sliced cucumbers, pickled veggies, some jalapenos, and an excessive amount of cilantro. The finishing touches for our bun mai is a couple splashes of Maggie seasoning and some fresh ground black pepper. And just like that, you've made bun mai pit nung at home. As always, the principal recipe is on my blog at feedthepudge.com. And if you've made it this far, let me know in the comment section what your favorite sandwich is. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy.